Hello friends, welcome to Garden with Creekside. I am Jenny and here I am coming to you again from a snowy Creekside nursery here in Dallas, North Carolina. It is a couple of days past the snow, but our temperatures are still quite cool and we have a lot of snow, especially in the shady areas. We were here just the other day when it was actually snowing and I showed you the aquapods that I had neglected to take care of properly in time. So that is what we're going to do today, along with check on the progress of the electrical here at the new greenhouse at the nursery because Jerry and Andrew have been faithfully working on this and they are so close to being done. Um, so I just want to check in with them and see how they are doing. And then we'll come back out here real quick and we are going to empty the aqua pots because um, it should have been done at least a month ago and I am behind. So, and this is the case of take my advice on how to empty the aqua pot, but the timing is all wrong. We'll talk about it more a little bit. But first, let's go in here to the greenhouse and check on the boys. You can see that we still have quite a good bit of snow. Obviously, where the sun has been shining, it is melting, but in other locations, it is still quite quite snowy and a little bit of ice uh, but it is nice and warm inside the greenhouse and here are the fellas and they are working jerry is working on putting the electrical outlets up top for the lights to plug in we got these led lights from um, order them online and there's a total of eight of them running down the length of that center beam where Jerry is, um, kind of down where Andrew is there in front of the heater. So there is four, um, there are four lights on each side and it's nice because they do just have like a direct plug into um, an outlet. So they are doing the final touches on that and getting everybody hooked in so once they get done, I think we're gonna turn the lights on, but the heaters are working, the fans are working. We have all electrical is up and going. Everything is going great. You can also see the roof, how it's handling the snow. Somebody had asked in one of, I think it was the snow video actually about how we handle snow on the roof of the greenhouse. We don't do anything to it, it does just fine. Um, just the heat of the sun is melting it and it's just going off the sides. Now, of course, if we had plants in here and we had the heater running, then of course that would expedite the whole process. But you can see where on the two outer edges that it's going off a little bit more because it's hanging off the side and going down the side as opposed to here in the middle where the gutter is, it's having to melt and then drip off the back. But this is rated, it can handle this amount of snow and we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to do anything. The likelihood of us getting some sort of like major horrible storm where we would have to worry about it would be pretty rare. So we'll come back and check on them in a little bit. Now let's get to the aqua pot. So I've got the bobcat. What I'm going to do first is just very simple. I'm going to, I have my clippers and I have my hori hori. I'm going to use my hori hori to dig out the plants because I have got in here, I've got a lorpedalum. I have got the lemon coral sedum, two of those, and then some ornamental kale and cabbage. The ornamental kale and cabbage, not going to worry about save, saving. That's just going to go into the compost pile. The lorpedalum will get put back into repotted and I think I'm going to go ahead and try to save the lemon coral as well so we'll just put that in a pot 
um, and maybe use it in an arrangement later on because the lemon coral sedum from Proven Winters is technically an, a perennial for us here in North Carolina because we are a zone 7B. I'm just gonna leave it, the pot on its side because there's no point in yanking it up. So I'm just gonna get my, the Hori Hori is fantastic. We've talked about this before. It's a wonderful garden tool. Um, <coughs> tons of different manufacturers will make these and you can get them all sorts of different places but it has the knife side on one serrated edge let's see if you can see that the serrated edge right here on the other and then it has a bit of um, a scoop in it so it also makes it great to dig things out and then of course the point is wonderful for going in. So I use this for weeding. I use it for getting plants out, all sorts of things. Um, and they may not be very rooted in here because they've only been here since the fall. So we're just gonna get in here, get the plants out. I'm gonna put them in the bucket and then we'll take them off and then I'll come back and get the soil. See if we can just, yeah. Like those cabbages are just gonna pull out. These were grasses, those were annual grasses, so they're done. Let's see. Well, this grass is really in there. Well, all right. I thought I was gonna do it one way, but it looks like I'm gonna be doing it another way because this grass was so well rooted in there. Let's see. Let's see if we can get the lower pedalum. Okay, here we go. Lower pedalum's out. We're saving that, so that's off to the side. Lemon coral. We're gonna try to save that beauty. So we'll put it off to the side. One more lemon coral here. Whoop. There we go. Look at that. This was a 4.25 container when I put it in in the spring so pretty and here it is middle of January still doing well now okay so this grass clearly is really well rooted into the pot and when I was pulling it I could feel that the whole system was coming which is what you want uh, just my order was a little messed up so let's see what it does here <laughs> look at that can you see all those roots in there? It's fantastic. This, my friend, is the reason why I tell you to start your containers with fresh soil every single season because of the massive root system that takes place. Let's see if you can see this. So, this mat, can you see the, all those roots? See that? That was what was in contact with the, what I'm gonna show you in a little bit. So those roots had reached the bottom and were completely covering it over. This is why you get fresh soil every time after each growing season, I should say. Oh my gosh. All right, so here's my, water tube that goes in there. It's how you get the water right into the bottom of the pot. All right, off to the side that goes. And there's really no way to do this without making a hot mess. You just get in there and do it. If I had a shovel, that would be nice, but I don't have a shovel, so we're gonna use the two best hands, the two best tools that the Lord gave us. 
our hands. By the time I went and found a shovel, I could just do this. Okay, so now that we got all the soil out, we're gonna pull out the disc and the fill tube at the bottom, which is always really fun to do because in it, <laughs> I knew it. Look at those roots. Look at that. Is that not crazy? So if you ever wondered if aquapots work and do the roots really go for the water? Yeah, they do. Look at that. It's crazy. All right, so we're gonna get this cleaned up. And that's one thing that we do love so much about these aquapots is um, the ability to clean them at the end of the season. So it's just the tube and I'm sticking my hand in it and it'll, it's hard to do. There we go. I mean, you're short. There we go. So this was the soil that was in that soil cube and it's completely full of roots. So going back to what I was saying though, the reason that we love the aqua pot so much as a self-watering container, one of the reasons is because you can get in here, there's only three pieces and you can get in here and take this whole thing apart and you can clean it. So the fill tube simply screws in to the top. You can unscrew it. If you need to disinfect it, you can go ahead and take this and hot soapy water, but it comes completely apart. Other self-watering containers that have like the water in the sides of the container, much, much harder to clean and disinfect. Here, like I said, take it, rinse it out, give it a good scrub, clean it up, put it away for the winter, easy peasy. Only three pieces makes life so much easier. Last little bit of soil is out. <laughs> Nothing like putting mud all over your face. And then we're gonna see if I can pick this up and we're just gonna turn it upside down and put it in front of this pergola. I know I could do it unless that we have snow. Makes things a little more challenging. Gonna go get Jerry, he'll help me. Okay. And then perfect. Yep, that's all I need. I know, that's all I need. Thank you, darling. Oh, oh yeah, it is. Video in your deconstruction. I am. All right, I'm gonna go dump. I'll be back. Right. I'm gonna turn this off. All right, so Andrew came to the rescue for me. We got him put up. Definitely a two-person job, <laughs> especially when you have snow and it's slippery underneath. So what I'm gonna do is just go dump the soil and the old plants in our compost area, come back and we're gonna do the other one the exact same way. I got my honey this time to help me. He's not up on a ladder now. So what Andrew and I did, is like I put my foot and then you lifted. And then swirl it back. Yep. There we go. It's a good thing about the snow. <laughs> it just kind of slides. Okay, my friends. Just like that, the aqua pots have been emptied. They are now prepared for winter, even though it started a month ago. It's 
better late than never. So just as a recap, because maybe I, didn't, I wasn't very clear on that um, in the beginning, why we empty the aqua pots is because they are self-watering containers. As you know, water, when it freezes, it expands. And if the pots are full of water, they expand, they can then crack my pots, which I do not want that to happen because then I lose my pots. So what we advise our friends, customers here in the South that have aqua pots, I leave it up to you. You get to decide if you want to risk it and leave them out, go for it. I personally am gonna go on the side of caution and empty them for the coldest part of the winter, which we are going into right now for us in North Carolina, this middle of January through middle of February into the end of February can be the coldest weather that we have. That six to eight week period, really about six weeks, that is our coldest time. For example, today it was supposed to be up to 54, not sure if we're gonna get there, but for the next foreseeable future, like two weeks, our um, highs are in like the 40s and then we can hit some really cold temperatures at night. For us, when I say really cold, I'm talking in the teens. We are in the south, so I know it's all relative, right? What you consider cold and hot is all relative. For us, it is cold. I want them emptied. Come into February, be going into March, that's probably when I will go ahead and plant them up with my tulips. I treat tulips as annuals, so that's when I will pot these up with those so they can have beautiful tulips in the spring for our customers. So really, as long as they are upside down like this and cannot retain water, then they're perfectly fine with leaving them out even in the coldest of temperatures. Jack Barnwell, who designed the pots, who has is a landscaper both in South Florida and Upper Michigan, even in Upper Michigan, he says as long as you turn them upside down, then they are perfectly fine. If you wanna leave them out, like these are huge, we're leaving them out, or you could put them in your garage, a storage shed, garden shed, your basement, whatever you want. Just don't lose those three parts that go inside the aqua pot because come springtime, you'll be kicking yourself. So what I'm gonna do is take those pieces and put it in what we call the outhouse. It's not really an outhouse, it's our electrical box. That's the place that we always put them. So that is where they're gonna go. And just like that, they are done. The lemon coral and the lower petalum, I will put, just throw them in um, some you know, pots with some potting soil, let them get rooted out, and then we can plant them, use them again in another project somewhere down the line. But I do wanna go in and check on the boys inside because Jerry was gonna turn some things on. So we can see that and then who knows what else we can get into. But aquapots, I can check off my list of things to do. Alrighty, my friends, here we are in the greenhouse with uh, my special guest here. He is not mic'd up, so he's gonna uh, stay close to me and or the camera so that he can explain all the inner workings of the electrical system to you because uh, yeah, if you've noticed, I have just the very basic knowledge and just, you know. Right. Yeah. So, do we want to go first into the room and look at that, or do you want to explain from out here? No, so we've, we have finished up all the necessary wiring. The only thing that is not done, as far as wiring goes, mm -hmm. is the wires coming from the motors that roll up the sides. Okay. And wire it into the box. Okay. So you have got all of the lights are wired, the shutters up there yep. to let in the fresh air. Yeah. Um, the fans on, and we're going to turn we're going to turn all this on here in a second, right? So if you notice these fans, I mean, what are, what are these, these fans here help circulate the air. So these fans that you see up here. Yes. Yeah. So those, those, those are circulating fans. So they circulate the air around, that's why they're in, if you notice, they're in opposite direction. Opposite direction. So you can kind of create a whirlwind, whirlwind tornado effect. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that way it's always moving the hot air around or the cool air and just kind of keeping the air moving instead of being stagnant. So yeah. that, those are, that's what that's for. If you, noticing those and got like what in the world why we have backwards fans you know that's why so heaters heaters are good and man I came in here the other day and Jerry was working and he had them turned on whoo wee yeah. 
It's nice and toasty. All right, so here we are into the room. Yeah, this main panel. Got it. It's all ready to go. This is Alex. This turns on those fans. This is the power that's going to turn on what we call climate loss. So that's the, a, that sounds fun. Yeah. This is the climate loss here, and it's reading um, zone one right now inside the greenhouse at 54 degrees. This is all, you know, you can preset when you want the heat to come on. So right now, heater one is set to come on to reach 65 and to reach 63. So we know once I give power to the heater, it's going to come on. So um, side note here, and I know this is different, but just I think out of curiosity, what would you say the average temperature is like once we're growing annuals in here? Kind of what do you keep it at? Uh, during the night, uh, we're trying to keep the temperature 59. Yeah. Because we're growing, we're not tropical. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I may do this at the beginning, like right, once they're first here, to oh. just to get everything rolling, get the right. roots rooted. But even still, that's what you said, 65? Yeah, 65. Yeah. So we'll, we'll try to keep it, you know, 59, 60 degrees at night, and that's all we need to do. And then as they get larger and they, they grow, we'll cut the heat back. I mean, sometimes it'll be in the 50s. Right. Because a lot of these things that we're growing, like the supertunias and the caliber coas, they grow really well in cool temperatures. Yes. And it does, so I think there's maybe a, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, a misconception that we have to keep these greenhouses like at, you know, 80, 85 degrees. No, yeah, I mean, like that, that temperature there, 54, I mean, that's not bad. No, it's quite pleasant in there. Yeah, so um, that's a nice temperature for everything that we grow. There are some things, grasses and, coleus and certain things that we warm weather that warmer weather they'll survive though they won't die they're mm -hmm. not going to thrive and go crazy right they're not going to die and that's all we really care about until i'm really ready to let them roll gotcha and that's just a preference on our part all right now explain to us what is this all these this is what this is the brain this is this is the brain i guess and this is the electrical system this is like the heat here. It's telling the therm this is thermostat wire. Mm -hmm. So it's telling the thermostats to come on for heater one, heater two. Um, this 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 is actual power here. This okay. This is a 110 volt power. Um, that's powering um, the shutters, fans, power for the box. Mm -hmm. You know, this will power until the vent boss, which we have to mount that's this the guy vent boss so, everybody's a boss around here uh -huh. so got the climate boss and the vent boss so this is the vent boss uh-huh so it, it tells the sides when they come up it powers all that so, gotcha it's pretty expensive too and so so we will have to cut holes through this and wire in the two motors that go into here and then there's some wires that come all the way from here and um, we'll come through this box and we'll mount it here and we're going to conduit to it and that way we, it'll just be all nice and neat gotcha all right so can we get some things powered up here so yeah another climate boss and this is a heater and we'll just go ahead and turn everything else on oh right i hear it yep. So it's, right now it's running gas, it's straight gas to the flame and ignited the flame. It's heating up those tubes that are inside, that's your, um, inside your furnace there. Gotcha. So it's heating those up. So when it gets to the right temperature, it'll kick on. Here we go. Yeah, so it's lighting up. First it goes through and it kind of gets rid of what it may be bad gas or something like this, whatever's left in the line. And it's heating up and then the fan will kick on here. And then it gets really toasty. Yeah. And then to turn on the circulating fans, we, have a switch. we have a switch over here, trying to make it handy dandy. Oh, I didn't turn it right 
sorry, false alarm. Gotta turn the breaker on. But the fan did kick on with the heater. So what you see in the front here of the heater, you can see those grates. And then in the back, there's a fan, a blower. Oh, there they go. Do you see that fan right there? That's what is blowing the hot air out of the heater. So it pushes it forward, and then our circulating fans here are creating that whirlwind that Jerry was talking about to circulate. That's their main purpose, circulate the air. But, oh, yeah. my back's to the heater right now, and whew, it's warm. <laughs> and then these guys are not plugged in yet, so that's why they're not on. And lights, we'll see. Live action, Live action here, people. Oh, ta-da! Let there be light. So, we really need to come back here at night and see it. But yes, four on that side, and then come around. And there is four more. There are four more right here. Way to go, brother. Okay. All right. So, anything else to add? I don't think so. I think we're good. Uh, so, it's been a productive afternoon. Aquapots are emptied. Electrical is doing great. What else is there electrical to do? There, nothing other than the power to the vent boss. Yay! Other than the power to the vent boss. It is done, and we were talking before we started filming this part. Next thing will be really probably start bringing in some tables because we're going to, anyway, to configure the greenhouse and then think about plumbing. And other than that, we can start growing plants in here. Yeah, sounds great. All right. As always, thanks so much for going to Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.